Everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make bread in a super renegade way. I mean, bread making is probably not all that exciting. I, I'm sure there's a ultimate survival knife video out there that's much more exciting than this, but we're going to be doing it in a way that is completely unconventional, and will just it'll just blow you away. You're going to be blown away by this approach to it. Um, what I've got here in front of me are all the ingredients. I think that I'm gonna be using. Bread is really basic. It's flour, water. Everything after that is kind of extra. Uh, so, you know, that's the basic stuff. And we have that plus a few extra things here. So I've got a large mixing bowl. I'm gonna be putting everything into there and I'm gonna start with these two tubs. One of these has white flour in it, which is a kind of flour that tends to be very light and fluffy. Uh, like the chaff has been removed out of it. So it's not as much fi fiber, but it's gonna make your bread fluffier. So I'm gonna put in precisely, I don't know. I'm not sure how much is going in here. I'm gonna pour in about that much. I'm, I wanna make enough uh, dough to make two pizzas right now. That's the goal is two pizzas and a little mini bread that River usually likes to make. So that's the white flour. Now I've got another square here that's full of wheat flour. Now I'm gonna measure out precisely I don't know, how much is that? You know, they say you need to be very precise when you're baking, because baking is a science, baking is chemistry, and you have to be very precise about how much uh, of any ingredient you put in, because all the ingredients have to work with each other. In practice, I found that that's completely untrue when it comes to bread. I just, I mean, you saw what I did. I'm gonna put in a little bit of salt. Oftentimes, I would just use, you know, just salt like this, um, but I have another source of salt. Uh, an old pretzel bag. There's always salt in the bottom there. I'm gonna pull the salt out of there. Now, there's all these little, uh, you know, grits of, you know, old pieces of pretzel and stuff. That can go right in, no worries. How much is in here? I don't know. It's like about that much. I don't know how much that is. I'm gonna put that in. That's probably fine. I don't think I need any more. Uh, at this point, I could just put some water in and mix it up and that'd be fine, but I'm gonna do a couple extra ingredients because I can. Uh, first, I'm gonna do some yeast, uh, you know, because I want it to be a fluffy bread. So I'm gonna put the yeast right in on top here and I'm gonna put precisely, I don't know, how much is that? I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll put in a little extra. Maybe I won't, I don't know. Uh, it's living things, they're bacteria, they're gonna multiply in there. I don't know, I put a bunch on top of there. I'm also gonna throw in some, uh, what is this stuff? Chia, I think it's chia, I'm not sure. You can throw in chia, oftentimes I'll take walnuts and kind of crush walnuts up, throw some walnuts in the bread that gives it some good flavor and as a vegetarian that also gives me some omega fatty acids and everything, uh, but walnuts are great in here. I don't really feel like chopping them up right now so I'm just gonna put some chia in there. There you go, like that. The more of this kind of stuff you put into the bread, uh, the less cohesive it's gonna be. The closer it is to 100% like white flour, the more you know stretchy it is gonna be. So that's kind of the balancing act that you're, you're doing there. And then as the last ingredient, uh, of course, you know we're gonna put in you know this, this green stuff. I mean, why not, you know? Am I even gonna tell you what that is? Probably not. All right, so we've got it all in the bowl here. Now just take the spoon, Mixing it up. And once it's reasonably well mixed, you know, I, I'm not sure if I had enough salt with that, those pretzels. I've got another bag of pretzels I could tap, but I think I'm just gonna throw in a little extra salt. The salt just serves the function of making the bread taste good. It's uh, not really critical in the rise. It'll rise and be fluffy either way. Uh, and I've just got some water here. It can be warm water. You don't want it to be hot water, like boiling, because that would kill the yeast, but water. Warm is kind of good, but not necessary. River, did you want to stir it all? Okay, so River's going to stir a little bit. 
He's got a little bit of a cold right now, so we're gonna try not to sneeze into it, right? Now, if you have a helper helping you like this, one good piece of advice is to remind them to hold a little lower on the spoon. You wanna hold a little lower on the spoon. That gives you better control because we don't want it to be flicking up and out of there. So keep good control and we're scraping things from the outside in. I think you probably need a little bit more water. We'll do that. If you put in too much water, you can always add a little bit more flour later. I find that a good consistency for this stuff is kind of like a little bit more dry than Play-Doh, especially when you have the whole wheat flour in there. The whole wheat flour seems to take a little bit of extra time to soak up the, the water. Um, so like if it's a little bit drier than Play-Doh, you know, once you, you kind of mix it all together, you can always come back, throw a little extra water in. If you don't put in uh, enough water, it's easy to add more. If you put in too much water, it's getting too, a little, little rough. If you put in too much water, then you're kind of committed that you have to make more, more bread. So I'm just gonna mix this around like this. I usually like to start my bread the day before I knead it. Uh, that gives it an opportunity to rise overnight. Now this is not necessary at all. You can, you can do it the day before you knead it. You can do it a couple hours before you knead it. Uh, if you don't mind whether it's leavened or not, you can do it a few minutes before you knead it. But I like to start it the day before, and that gives it a chance to kind of rise overnight in kind of a cool place. You don't want it to overrise. Uh, so you let it rise overnight. Yeah, this is looking like a pretty good consistency here because you get like uh, uh, these wet lumps, but there's also a little bit of powder left over. And usually that powder gets taken up after it does its first rise and like the water kind of like spreads around and everything. So this is, this is a pretty good consistency here with having a little bit of powder left at the bottom like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lid on this. I'll, I'll take a knife and use that to scrape this off, but I'll put a lid over this and I'm going to have it in like, you know, kind of a cooler area, not like the refrigerator or anything like that, not the basement, but you know, like a cooler area that's comfortable in the house. I'll have it sit overnight with a lid on it. Uh, and, uh, probably like the end of the day today before nighttime, I'll give it a little kneading. And then tomorrow morning, uh, you know, whenever I feel like I have to get up at like five in the morning, like, like bread bakers do it, like, you know, bread bakeries and stuff. Whenever I get around to it, give it another kneading. I usually like to give it three kneadings, you know, initially like this first kind of mixing thing. And then another time when you kind of knead it and then crush it down, then one more time, knead it, crush it down. And then you kind of, you know, make it into whatever loaves you, you, uh, you might want it to be making it. Like I said, this is gonna be pizza, uh, pizza dough. When I first started doing the bread, it seemed really silly to me that the thing would get nice and big and fluffy and I'd be like, oh man, I'm gonna like crush it down again. Isn't that counterproductive? Um, kneading it multiple times, breaking it down multiple times, uh, it seems to like really get the fibers all locked together. It makes it much more uh, kind of like doughy, like well, is doughy the right word? I don't know. It makes it much more uh, chewy, like, like the good, the good qualities of bread where it's kind of like chewy and it holds together as opposed to being brittle and kind of like just flaking apart. Uh, doing multiple kneadings seems to help with that kind of thing. And um, yeah, yeah, overall it works pretty well. I do this every Friday um, for pizza night. So like when, when my video is released every Friday at 4.30, you know that my family, we're having pizza and that's what we're making right here. Okay, by the way, the green stuff, the reason it's green, it's spirulina. It's a, um, an aquatic plant that you can buy as a powder form. It's got a lot of amino acids and everything. I just, I throw it into everything that I can think to throw it into. It doesn't have much of a flavor. I, I put it into bread all the time. I put it into yogurt. Um, and you swirl it into yogurt. It makes every, every, all the yogurt you're eating green, but it's a super healthy food. Uh, adds a bunch of amino acids and all sorts of nutrients and everything. And it just, you know, green pizza dough. Once you, once you bake it, it becomes kind of like an olive drab kind of, well, it's like this color once you break, once you bake it. So that's it. Bread making is not rocket science. It's, I mean, I know there's science involved in it, but you can be really super cavalier about the way you mix all these things together. And my God, I, I, I've never had like a massive fail when it comes to bread. The only time when my bread isn't the best is like when I rush it like the day before and it doesn't have as much time to rise. In terms of the ingredient mix, sure, it's possible. I mean, like if I dumped this entire thing of salt in, that would be horrible. But I mean, you're not gonna do that. Experiment, try some things out. You saw the way I did it. As long as you're somewhere in the ballpark, it always seems to work really well. And bread is a super great way to create 
an energy rich food that you and your family can enjoy. And if you add a few extra things like the chia and spirulina, you can also get a lot of nutrients into it as well. That's it, super renegade bread making. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.